guys, it's finally that time. And that time is plow mount. Now it's the first time you're uh, tuning in in regards to this plow mount. Um, something I picked up used on, I think it was on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, just push plates. This is the way I got it. Um, somebody took the time to sand and grind it down. And by grind, I mean grind as opposed to sanding. You can see all the scrapes from the sanding disc or the uh, grinder disc, grinder wheel which is now imprinted in the metal, but no big deal. You don't see it, it's under there and it's uh, painted and protected for now. So <clears throat> I did not get the uh, hardware with it and you can go on Fisher's website and there's a parts list of everything you need with sizes and everything. Uh, this is multiple times now I've put used push plates on another truck. Um, so this is part of the hardware here that's already connected for this cross brace. Um, which I may or may not have to take apart. I'm assuming I probably don't have to take it apart because I think when they took it off um, Had they had to take this apart to take it off then they would have probably just hand tightened it back together or kept it in separate pieces rather than trying to carry it around You know these bolts are nice and tight. I believe they're tightened up. Yeah, they don't look like they've been disturbed so I think I can take this whole unit as one fixture and, and lift it up to the frame, drill my holes, and uh, we'll be good to go. So, uh, the instructions show how to do this as well as uh, you know, on fisherplow.com, their website, and as well as the hardware involved. And what it lists is basically this hardware here, which is a uh, half-inch grade 8 bolts with nuts and washers, flat washers. And what they have is there's actually little arms that are connected to the bolts which allow you to grab the, the bolt basically and slide it down the end of a frame inside of a frame and poke it through the hole. Um, so it's basically, you know, I've had these type of bolts before. It's basically just steel like this that's connected to the bolt um, welded on there. And that's usually, you know, about this long. Some are longer than others depending on what the reach is. But that allows you to be able to slide the bolt down into the frame as well as stops the bolt from turning when you go to tighten the nut up on the other side. Uh, so to remedy that, rather than ordering the exact hardware from Fisher, I just went to the hardware store, got myself some grade 8 half inch bolts with nuts, washers. So this is all basically the same as you'd get with, with uh, Fisher. And I'm going to take and make my own uh, bolts with the welder. So what I'll do is I'll cut off. I got six bolts that need this, so I'll probably just cut this into six equal length pieces because it's usually, I don't know, about 10, 10, 12 inches or whatever that they give you. And I'm just going to uh, connect that to the back of the bolt and just uh, hit a couple of tack welds on it and create my own bolts for sliding inside the frame. So easy enough to do. Uh, if you didn't have a welder, um, you could do, uh, you know, a little bit of grinding quick to clean up this metal and take some JB weld and uh, JB weld them on and then let them sit overnight <clears throat> and that would be strong enough to be able to slide them into the rail and tighten them up and worst case scenario if it did break loose uh, with the JB weld or whatever it's it's fine you, you've already got them in there and uh, chances are you're gonna cut them with a torch or a grinder uh, when you remove them anyways if you ever remove the fish the, the uh, push plates so usually you don't reuse the hardware anyway so not a big deal uh, that's what I'm going to do, and I picked this up, all the nuts, bolts, with this, uh, with this uh, length of, of uh, steel. I think it's uh, half inch steel, maybe. Yeah, half inch by 48 plain steel. Uh, it was like 14 or $19. I can't remember what the total was, but not too bad. I'm sure if you go to Fisher and ask for a, uh, a hardware bag for your Fisher push plates, they're probably, you know... 50 or 100 bucks or something for the hardware so this way you save a little money and time and you don't have to worry about it so the instructions on this truck um, say that you need to remove the front bumper uh, so I'm just going to uh, plan on doing that there might be a way to do it without the bumper I think uh, I know we have to remove some brackets yeah I can't even see anything so we're going to have a little bit of surgery on the front of this truck to get this bumper off and uh, hopefully we can get it nice and wide open and uh, have a nice view of what's going on because um, I do believe that to mount this up it requires uh, drilling holes into the frame uh, 
uh, probably these three I don't know there's a lot of holes here so we'll see what happens when we get it lined up there's one on the bottom here so but it says there's only six bolts that I need to connect it three on each side so I'm assuming some of these holes are already there in the frame and you reuse the hardware for like the bumper bracket or whatever to connect it in and then you have to add three new holes on each side so and this would be your half inch bolts of the right length um, you know that'll end up going in there so get you a little bit of video of it and uh, maybe you have the same type of push plates that you're trying to put on your Dodge this is an 05 2500 Cummins uh, SLT model and I believe they're going to be all the same from 2003 to 2006, I think. And then 2007 up is the fourth gen, I believe. I don't know my Dodges that well, so don't quote me on it. But if you look on uh, Fisher's website, they'll tell you exactly. Um, they'll show you exactly which uh, models are what and which ones are compatible with what. So I know this is the correct uh, set of push plates for my truck. So um, on another note, this is uh, kind of the first time I've had a truck in here to work on it. Um, I should actually pull it forward another uh, 8 to 10 inches. You can see the door is almost closed. It's a, f a couple inches from being able to close. But this is a, a six and a half foot bed extended cab truck. And you can see I've got a good, I would say probably five or six feet in the front here. I've got a good five feet four well probably five feet here and then uh same thing on this side so if i got these barrels and stuff out of here i've you can see i've got plenty of room all the way around and this is why i made this uh garage the size that i did to be able to have this much room i don't even have all the lights on i got this light here so as you can see nice bright clean workspace i got the wood stove right there to stay warm and uh, this is the first time me actually utilizing the shop in this way. I've got my fake uh, concrete floor with some leftover job materials, so I'm nice and clean and smooth for jacking things up. Pretty excited to get working, guys. So hopefully uh, this job goes smooth and enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so I did a good looking over on this bumper to see how it's disconnected, and uh, it appears to be extremely simple. Uh, everything from what I can tell I have this one connector right here which I believe was for the fog lights okay and there's just a little red tab right here that you slide back and that unlocks this connector and allows you to disconnect it okay and that gives uh, power down into this lower bumper and the only thing that's in there is fog lights so I'm assuming that's the fog light harness if your truck doesn't have fog lights you probably don't have that so I went ahead and disconnected that and we've got these two bolts right here right here and right here on either side that go through the frame let me give it a little a little juice to help them come out and uh, they're 19 millimeter or three quarter so we're gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect those and I believe it's as simple as that I believe that's all there is to it is these two bolts on either side, so we'll see. See if I get you guys in position. Ah, rather not break this ratchet, let me get something a little stronger. actually a little loose I believe they're 18 millimeter not 19 and I mean a little loose I mean the socket on the nut but I'm already down here so Okay. And these bolts just go right through the frame and you can see there's this bracket right here that holds the back side. Right here. So that 
they won't spin so we're gonna get those off and slide those out on both sides you can see the other back side of that one right there and I think the bumper comes right off so wish me luck Binding up pretty good. Okay. All right, Cyrenek has a tip for us related to last week's episode. You can help us in very little detail. Pay attention to the computer screen. When I was consulting, I frequently find myself behind a network rack messing with tables and unable to see my screen. Is what we're working with these bolts go right through the frame the uh, heads of them are captive inside of this plate to stop the heads from spinning and these are the nuts that were on the outside one of these on each side looks like this puppy comes right off Bad at all guys that's all that's holding your front bumper on toe the uh, toe hooks everything stays right with it so one plug if you have fog lights and those uh, two bolt setups and we're off very very simple the only thing you had to worry about is when you're sliding these, now these go through right here. When you're sliding these out, it hits the edge of this radiator a little bit. You can see it's really tight in there. Okay, 
So as you're sliding it out, watch out for the corner right in here. Or cooler, whatever cooler it is. I don't know if that's a radiator or not. I'm not really looking at it right now. Same thing on this side. You can see the two bolts right here where they come, come through. And just catches the edge. You can see the little ding in the plastic. So I just kind of wedged this back a little bit. Just be careful. And it went right in. Alright guys, so it's a little tight, rubbing up against the frame rails here, and that's probably why this piece is uh, removable, because you probably bolt each side on separately and then add this at the end. Um, I figured I could cheat maybe and put it on as one unit, and with a little bit of force I could probably get it up there, um, but rather, rather than doing that and scraping the paint all up really bad, I'm just going to head and see if these will loosen up a little. All you need to do is back them off about two turns each so they have a little bit of play and that'll loosen up on the uh, push plates on the side. So see if that see if that works. So this hole right here is reused. That's one of the bumper bolts. And then on the inside, there's a hole on the bracket here and here. So both of those are reused with the uh, stock hardware. So we'll slide those bolts right back in through here and uh, reconnect the bumper. Now I know that the bumper bracket that slides up here isn't gonna have enough room to go over this now. So I'm gonna, uh, figure out it looks like this is bent in like they put the bumper bracket on the outside but I believe the bumper bracket's supposed to go on the inside so I might have to bend this back out you can see comes straight across here and then it doesn't go up at a 90 you can see there's a gap here and then it's tight against the frame here so I think whoever put these on sandwiched the bumper bracket on the outside and it probably goes in the inside. I'll look at the instructions and figure out which way it goes. But once these four bolts are molt bolted up, then you just go in the back and we need to drill the holes uh, for any of the other hardware. Same thing on this side, bolt right there. So I believe after this, there's two bolts that go through here. You gotta drill two holes here, and then one through the bottom right there so one two three and then this four five of the factory hardware factory hardware one two three and that's all the nuts and bolts that's all there is to it pretty simple let's go ahead and get going all right i read the instructions and what it's telling us is going to end up happening is with these brackets if you want to call them brackets or bolts. Um, it also says, uh, this is actually the intercooler, not the radiator uh, that I mentioned earlier that is kind of in the way. It mentions to disconnect the mount bolts and move it out of the way to get these out. I didn't have to do that. I was able to just, I mean, literally it was maybe an eighth of an inch and it's rubber mounted. I was able to just kind of pry it out of the way. Um, if you want to be super safe, maybe do what it says in the instructions. It says something about disconnecting a couple of the mount bolts to be able to shift it out of the way 
but regardless what it's saying now is when we do reassemble it this is coming from the outside in as opposed for the inside of the frame rail out um, so it's going to end up going this way so going back in this isn't going to be a clearance issue and it is showing uh, there's actually no um, uh, it's showing no bracket outside here it's just showing this is connecting right up through that and looking at the bumper there is definitely a bracket there so we'll figure out uh, I believe it's gonna go in between it's gonna sandwich in between here and then this is gonna go right through <clears throat> but this has to be put up into position and we need to get these couple of bolts in to have these uh, push plates mounted where they need to go um, just to be able to mark where we need to drill these holes because if we wait until we put these in with the bumper the bumper is going to be in the way we're not going to be able to get in here and drill those holes so what we need to do is get this up into position temporarily put these bolts in to hold it where these things are going to end up going and we're going to go ahead and drill these couple of holes that we need to do now and get those out of the way they're two half inch holes it's actually telling us to use the upper hole not the lower hole for my application that was diesel and v8 or diesel and v10 applications so v8 applications apparently you'd use another hole i don't i don't know which one obviously it must be the other one but so i need to drill a hole through this right here and then the hole underneath here also needs to be drilled so I'm going to get that into position and get that going. And then uh, <clears throat> what else? It also says that the tow hooks, if you have tow hooks, which I do, they need to be removed and discarded as well as the mounts that hold it. So I'm assuming these extra plates right here and right here is what the uh, tow hooks bolt onto. So this outer plate with these two bolts on both sides comes off and you discard it or hold on to it if you ever take the plow mount off as well as the tow hook so all that goes and then all we're going to be left with is this one thin inner bracket right here you can see there's two pieces of metal here this one inner bracket here and here and those are what are going to slide and sandwich back on the frame the way they did and then these right here are going over and sandwiching these two plates together so this is going to have to be bent out just a little bit to give me the clearance to slide the bumper bracket in here. Actually, it'll probably straighten itself out when I tighten it up over here. So, but that's the plan. All right, we got those bolts slid in as I was talking about, holding these push plates up in place. So, the, be able to uh, locate where these bolt holes need to be. Okay. So, on that side and this side, same thing. And then when we're done, we're just going to be able to put those nuts back on from underneath when we put the bumper back on. So let me go ahead and uh, get drilling. Okay, so I used the jack to put a little pressure to hold this push plate up against the bottom of the frame. So we know exactly where it's going to go. I got these bolts in to locate those holes. So now we know exactly where we need to, to drill a hole. Basically a hole like that we need to put right here. And then from underneath up through the bottom of the frame and then to get those bolts in we need to actually go through here which we're probably gonna have to take these little bra centering brackets out just to get them out of the way and then we use those extended bolts with the metal that I was talking about earlier and this will end up as like a handle to be able to get that bolt in now <clears throat> looking at it from here it's not that far I might not have to do that all together I might be able to pull these out and just stick a wrench in and hold the bolt in with that but we'll see how that goes if I don't have to I won't do it all right got that hole let's get the bottom one and then we'll repeat on the other side
what to do. Well, some rust on there. All right. So one, two. Let me uh, pull these brackets out. I'm gonna stick a bolt in there to hold it up and get these brackets out and see if we can't get those bolts started. Another good idea. We just drilled holes in the metal, which is giving us bare metal, which is kind of a great place for rust to start. So uh, what I like to do is spray uh, some fluid film or put some grease or some type of um, silicone, uh, all different things you could do. You could paint, you could put like a rust proofing on there, um, anything you can just to cover up those bare edges on the... Uh, on the metal just so it's not an area for rust to start you know it'll take years for it to happen but you want to uh, you want to be able to not have to uh, deal with that so go ahead and put a good layer of uh, some type of rust preventative on there I'm gonna put it on the bolts as well and uh, especially where it's a snow plow it catches all kinds of salt and uh, winter conditions it's just these little pins holding this bracket in Slide that puppy right out of there. Get it out of our way for now. Now this does need to go back in because it prevents the frame from crushing when you tighten up the bolts. But to get those other bolts in there started, let's go ahead and pull this out. It's just like a crush sleeve basically. Gonna leave her hanging there. And now we can see right inside the frame nice. Be a good time to spray some uh, protective in there too. You can see you got some sand and uh, some rust and stuff in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and spray this all down really good. I've got good inside frame access to those bolts as well. So I'm not gonna worry about welding that metal on. Won't need to do it in this situation. making some progress here as you can see I sprayed some sealer and stuff in there I got the trying to get this light just right you can see that bolt coming through from the, the bottom and then the one up on the side there the two holes that we just drilled and that's coming out here and here pretty simple guys nothing to it and then the other two bolts are just gonna be uh, the ones that were already there for the bumper so putting these brackets on got to drill two holes on either side very simple all right what i did here is i took a pry bar and bent this back now when you buy if you get new push plates they're probably not going to be bent like that one was um, but mine was bent in a little bit so i bent it back out so there's a little bit of a gap here we have a gap here and here because those two plates on that bumper bracket are going to slide in between here and then the bolts are gonna go through everything. So I wanted to make sure that that wasn't difficult. Now on both sides, I've got this gap and we've got those still loose so we can adjust it accordingly. Okay, and then I got the other bolts temporarily started. Um, now if they had the handles welded on them, you wouldn't have to worry about them spinning because you need to get a wrench on the other side to stop them from spinning when you tighten them up. Uh, so that might be a good idea or if you've got the original hardware, it's not an issue. Uh, me personally, I don't like those long pieces of metal. After I get them tightened up, I usually break it off anyways if I can because that's just one long piece of bare metal that could rust. You want to at the very least treat it and paint it because once you start rust on a piece of metal, it's going to spread around. So um, if I don't have to use them, I don't and I'm not going to in this situation. So what I'm going to do to hold the other side of the nut is nothing. I'm basically just going to hit these two with the... Uh, with the with the impact gun and usually just a couple of triggers full just the shock of it will you won't have to hold the other end and you'll be able to tighten them up as long as you don't have lock nuts on here they're just nice free spinning nuts you can just go ahead and blast them down without having to hold the other side so that's all i'm going to do for those bolts so this is all set right now i just got to remove those outer brackets and the tow hooks and slide the bumper back on and then slide these in put the nuts on and we're done so i just wanted to show you before i stuck these back in the frame um, actually goes like that but that's what we uh, we ended up doing and we've got this nice gap all the way around the frame so that way when we slide these in we'll have room so hopefully this will be uh, one two three now the only other thing that I need to do is there's uh, 
that bottom plastic, uh, what's it called, a uh, air dam, or there's another name for it, valance, the lower valance, I think, uh, is going to be in the way of this when we put the bumper back on. So it has instructions. In the instructions, it shows you where to cut. I think it's a 10-inch gap on the left and the right on either side. You need a 10-inch opening in that plastic just to allow enough room. So it's probably cutting from like here to like here just to make sure you've got enough room to put the bumper back on with these protruding out. If you, uh, you know, you could just remove it all together. That's what some people do because they don't like to see the broken up piece. But in this situation, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and cut it. We'll see how it goes. If it comes out and looks crappy or it's loose and broken in the end or, you know, doesn't seem worth saving, I'll just remove it and just have the push plates hanging down. But I think we'll be all right, so. But yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And the other thing you want to do before you tighten down, especially these bolts, um, you want to make sure there's a, a measurement inside um, from here to here, the, basically the center point. You can measure the outside here to the inside here, or in center to center, or this side to this side. Regardless, the point is you want to get the measurement between the center of this pin and the center of this one and I believe it's like 34 inches or 28 inches I forget what it is but it tells you in the manual or in the instructions and if that's off by a quarter of an inch um, if it's off by an eighth of an inch it's no big deal but if you're off by a quarter of an inch it can be really difficult to uh, when you go in and put the plow in you end up scraping the sides a little bit or it becomes a little tight so it's hard to get them so take your time and get this distance correct other words every time you disconnect and connect your plow you're going to hate life and wish that you didn't um, one thing i have done in the past as a little bit of a cheat if i wasn't able to get the you know i wasn't able to put shims or space any of this the way it needs to be and if i was still off a little bit i'd take a huge sledgehammer and i'd actually whack this the outside of this pin over or, or this way or that way on each side a little bit you can cheat and get you know about an eighth of an inch out of either one adjustment which equals a quarter of an inch so if you need to make up uh, a little bit of distance or close it up a little bit at the very end once everything's tight and you have no adjustment ultimately that's your last resort to get these to be lined up because you want those to be right on every time you hook up your plow other words it's a pain in the ass trust me you don't want to be out in the middle of a snowstorm dealing with that crap all right so i went out i went ahead and removed these tow hooks this is how the setup is just four bolts holding them on and these are the brackets that sandwich to make these a little bit thicker to give you strength for the tow hooks. So that basically just mounts up like that, just over the bumper brackets. So this is a good amount of weight we're taking off, off the front end, which is good because we're adding weight by adding these uh, push plates, adding a lot of weight to the front of this truck, which is already heavy. So we're going to stick these aside on the shelf. In case we ever take the plow back off, but that's what we're looking at. No more tow hooks. And uh, we're ready to slide the bumper back on now. Put these back in. I got the spaces popped back in here the way they should go. You just want to make sure before you put that bumper on that everything's lined up and these slide right in nice because you don't want to have to deal with that once you got the bumper on. So we're ready to slide the bumper on right now and again instead of going from the inside out we go from the outside in with these bolts tighten them up uh, actually no nope, before i do that i have to have to trim that lower valance so let me take a look at that i might actually take the valance right off for the time being to get the bumper mounted up where it needs to be and then add the valance back to it uh, we'll see what we end up doing with that so here's the instructions. Hopefully you're able to see this. I'll get you. All right, here's the instructions. This is your Fisher, uh, right off Fisher Plows website that shows you basically what I'm showing you. And this is the lower valance. You can see the plastic that usually goes right across. This is what it wants you to do. Shows you all the measurements. Basically, we got to notch this out right here. That the center piece gets trimmed down, and then notched out over here, 10 inches. So, the whole thing from start to finish is 10, 35, 45 and three-quarter inch from outer edge to, to outer edge. 
and 10 inches on either side go up to that height which it doesn't say what that height is but it's kind of easy to tell it goes right up to the crease and then uh, an inch and three-eighths inch height left on this centerpiece right across so I'm actually gonna go ahead and trim that before I put the bumper back on it's just a lot easier I'm gonna break out my saw horses lay the bumper on it and we'll mark all this out and uh, go ahead and trim it I'll show you that process all right so I was getting ready to trim this lower valance and as you can see she is pretty much junk now if I trim this off literally all I'm gonna be left with is these end pieces that aren't even really connected properly so I am making the making the move to remove this all together <clears throat> which isn't a big deal it looks a little nicer with it on if you can just as a space filler i think it makes the uh, plow mounts look a little more integral into the truck rather than hanging down you know below the bottom of the bumper but is what it is there's no sense in taking the time to go ahead and trim this up if i don't like the looks of it i'll order up a new valance and trim that one the way that it should be but this one uh, is pretty much junk so there's no sense on uh, taking the time to cut this i also notice one of my fogs fog lights is cracked so i gotta replace that but yeah, here's a better look too of where those, uh, the mounts, the uh, tow hooks connect to, right out here on both sides on that bracket. So we'll probably give that a quick coat of paint, kind of neaten that up too when we're all done. But yeah, so this is just connected with some type of uh, broken zip ties and half hardware. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that right off and go ahead and put the bumper back on. Alright, so this is what we look like all back together. Okay. There's those brackets that are going through this way now. And this is the frame, not the frame, the uh, bumper bracket right here. And this is the frame. So it's the frame, then this bumper bracket, and then this goes on the very outside with the bolts going through it on both sides. I'll show you the inside here. Really can't see too much here. But this is the bumper bracket here that's up against the frame or basically this bumper bracket is between the push plate and the frame. It gets sandwiched right in between there. And then we can see the two two bolts right there. I got to put the factory nuts back on these ones here and then before you tighten these up you want to make sure your bumpers adjusted in the position that you want it it's a little tight up here but not too bad probably about as simple of a bumper as you're gonna you're gonna deal with on a truck all right get those started so I'm gonna get the other two started on the other side and adjust the bumper tighten everything up and uh, that's all there is to it. I'll bring you back when we're all set. And we'll get the finished look. The bumper's sitting a little low right now, so. That's the finished product. Don't really love it without that uh, air dam or lower valance. Where they stick down a little bit, but it is what it is. It's a work truck, right? So I did... Uh, verify the distance between the two I tightened up all the bolts uh, retightened up that cross piece the new bolts that I put in got everything all snugged up really good and that puppy's nice and tight ready to go ready to hook up a plow too next up is going to be hooking in the wiring I don't know if I'm going to do a video on that it's kind of self-explanatory I mean you, you just follow the instructions it tells you where to hook each thing up to and there's really not much to see in a video so we'll see I may or may not um, show you that process but the good thing, if you're thinking about getting a plow or a used plow, or whatever, if you've got a truck that has the push plates on it already, or if you want to put your push plates on before you pick up the plow, you can 
you can bolt those up even if without drilling the holes if you want to just get a, a plow home let me turn this uh, radio down even if you just want to get a plow home without all your wiring and stuff hooked in as long as you got your push plates bolted on um, you know if you got six bolts on either side if you get three bolts in to hold it on you know you're not going to do any plowing with it you're just going to transfer uh, you're just going to uh, transport it so um, you could you know you could bolt in just the bolts involved uh, you know where the bumper is reuse that tighten it back up and that's going to be strong enough to hold the plow to transport the plow to get it home if you're looking to pick it up from a far distance or whatever that way you don't have to worry about lifting it up with a bobcat or something into the back of the truck and un unloading it it's nice to be able to just hook right up to it um, so what you can do is you can actually assemble the push plates put them on the truck somewhat or you know you could go through the whole install if you want but once they're uh, rigidly mounted on there you drive up, connect your plow up to it. You just don't hook up any of the wiring because there is no wiring. What you can do is you can take a jack and you jack under the A-frame of the plow and lift the plow up, get it you know, as high as you can up off the ground, probably you know, 10, 12 inches off the ground. And then the chain that connects to the, uh, to the piston on the top, you can pull the chain up. Depending on what model plow you have, there's different ways. Some of them have a separate safety chain. But go ahead and take all the slack out of that, that uh, chain um, and then click it back in and then drop your your jack and the chain will hold the weight of the plow up without any electronics or um, hydraulics hooked up so uh, that way you know I've done that a bunch of times you can you know pick up a plow if you're buying one used somewhere and you're driving a far distance you're able to pick up the plow that way of course you're not going to be able to control it once it's on there you're just going to have it on there but at least you can drive home just you know obviously you don't want to go 80 on the highway you want to make sure you're not blocking your your uh, radiator flow and stuff so you might have to play with the the height that you want to jack it up but you want to get it at least a good four to six inches off the ground so as you're driving you don't hit any uh any uh you know swell joints or whatever in the road but i've done that a bunch of times to get a plow home um, i've either had a truck that already had them had the push plates on with no wiring or i would find the uh, push plates that i need for the plow locally bolt them on and then i'd take the far trip to be able to clip clip up and uh, bring the, the plow back so I actually have a picture of my last truck the GMC I did the push plate install this summer it's a video I have on the channel and I hooked the plow up just to move it from my house down to the shop the same way I've never hooked up the wiring in that truck I never got to it so I am gonna hook up the wiring because we're in December now it could could snow at any minute so um, at this point, I at least am happier that I got one step closer. I know in about an hour's worth of time, I can have that electric wiring hooked up, um, you know, if a storm comes down. But it usually doesn't snow this early uh, here on the Cape. I mean, usually we have had some storms at the beginning of December, like the first week, like uh, I think the 5th and the 6th of December one year, but very, very rare. So I've been keeping an eye on the forecast. And if we end up uh, with any threat of snow, you bet your ass I'll be down here getting this thing hooked up really quickly. So... But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this will help somebody out uh, that may be interested in hooking up a plow on their Dodge. But there's your, uh, your finished result. Still got to do the oil pan on this truck. You can see it leaves its mark everywhere it goes. That's about how much it drips. I've been down here for a couple hours. It drips about that much. I just keep an eye on the oil level to make sure it doesn't run low. But uh, let's go ahead and pull this out. and uh, It's our first job in the, the new shop down here. Success.